Welcome to an example of free undamped motion. We saw in our previous lesson that we can describe free undamped motion using these linear second order homogeneous differential equations. These three equations are equivalent. Looking at this first equation, we have m times the second derivative of x with respect to t plus k times x equals zero, where m is the mass, k is the spring constant, and x is the displacement. The second equation here we just divided through by m, and then sometimes you'll see k divided by m replaced with omega squared. We'll talk about this later. We're given that a 24 pound weight is attached to the end of a spring, which means the weight w would be 24 pounds, which would be the weight of this object here. Next, the spring is stretched four inches, so the spring elongation, or s, this length here is four inches. But since we'll be using, but since we'll be using g equals 32 feet per second squared, we want to convert this to feet. Four inches is equal to four twelfths of a foot, which is one third of a foot. We want to find the equation of motion if the weight is released from rest at a point three inches above the equilibrium position. Well, because it says the weight is released from rest, that means the initial velocity would be zero. So we can say that x prime of zero equals zero, and then it's released three inches above the equilibrium position. So if we go back to our diagram for a moment here, the weight would not be released below the equilibrium position, it's released above, maybe somewhere in here. So this length here would be three inches, but because it's above the equilibrium position, we can say that x of zero would be equal to negative three inches. If it's released above the equilibrium position, we say x is negative. If it's released below, we say x is positive. So again, x of zero would be negative three inches, but to convert this to feet, this would be negative three twelfths feet, or negative one fourth of a foot. Now that we have all the given information, we now want to find the mass and the spring constant so we can write the differential equation in either this form or this form. So let's take this information onto the next slide. Let's go and set this up in this form here. So now we'll find k, the spring constant, and the mass m. Using the weight, we can find the mass. Mass is equal to weight divided by the acceleration due to gravity. So the mass is going to be equal to 24 pounds divided by 32 feet per second squared, or just 32. Simplifying here, common factor of eight. This simplifies to three-fourths of a slug. Next, to find the spring constant, we can use Hooke's law that says the force is equal to k times s. Well, the force would be 24 pounds. k is a spring constant, and s is one-third. So we'd have one-third times k. Multiplying both sides by three, we have k equals 72. Which means our differential equation would be x double prime plus k divided by m, which would be 72 divided by three-fourths times x must equal zero. 72 divided by three-fourths is equivalent to 72 times four-thirds. This simplifies nicely. 24 times four is equal to 96. So we want to solve the differential equation x double prime plus 96x equals zero. And once we solve this, we'll have our equation of motion. So we should recognize that again, this is a linear second order homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients, which means we can solve this by using a characteristic equation. So for a quick review, we can set up this characteristic equation using the values of a, b, and c from the differential equation, and then based upon the types of solutions, we can determine the form of the general solution. And in our case, we're going to have complex roots, and therefore the general solution will fit this form here. So let's go ahead and do that. Notice that a would be one, b would be zero since there's no x prime, and c would be 96. So we would have r squared plus 96 equals zero. Subtract 96 on both sides. 
take the square root of both sides, and we have r equals plus or minus the square root of, we can write negative 96 as negative 1 times 16 times 6, and therefore r is equal to plus or minus, we'd have 4i square root 6, or 4 square root 6i. So we have two complex solutions. We could write this as 0 plus or minus 4 square root 6i. So going back to our notes, we would have alpha plus or minus beta i. So alpha would be 0 and beta would be 4 square root 6. And since alpha is equal to 0, and we'd have e to the 0 here, e to the 0 here, which would give us 1. So we have c sub 1 cosine 4 square root 6 t, because we're using t instead of x, plus c sub 2 sine 4 square root 6 t. Notice how I did show all the work for the characteristic equation, but sometimes you'll see the solution where it's just x of t equals c sub 1 cosine omega t plus c sub 2 sine omega t without showing any of this work. But just in case that's how your book describes it, if we take a look at this slide here, if we use this form of the differential equation where we have omega squared x, this would be the characteristic equation, which again would give us the solutions plus or minus omega i, and therefore applying the form we just did, we could shorten our work by just using this form for the general solution for free undamped motion. So you may want to do that, but I do like showing the work each time. And now that we have our general solution, we can find the particular solution since we know that x of zero equals negative one-fourth and x prime of zero equals zero. So let's finish this on the next slide. If we know x of zero equals negative one-fourth, then negative one-fourth must be equal to the right side here when t is equal to zero. So if t is zero, here we'd have cosine zero, which is one. One times c sub one is c sub one, plus here we'd have sine zero, which is zero, so that'd be zero, so we know that c sub one must be negative one-fourth. So now we know x of t must equal negative one-fourth cosine four square root six t plus c sub two sine four square root six t. And we also know that x prime of zero equals zero, so now we'll find our first derivative here. x prime of t would be equal to, the derivative of this first term would be negative one-fourth times the derivative of cosine four square root six t which would be negative sine four square root six t times four square root six. Plus the derivative of the second term would be c sub two times cosine four square root six t times four square root six or four square root six c sub two cosine four square root six t. So since x prime of zero equals zero, we know that zero must be equal to, looking at this product here, we'd have sine zero, so all this would be zero, and then we'd have cosine zero here, which is one, so we have four square root six c sub two, dividing both sides by four square root six, we still have c sub two equals zero. And therefore our equation of motion, or the particular solution here would be x of t equals negative one-fourth cosine four square root six t. Since c sub two is zero, this term would be zero. Okay, that's gonna do it for this example. Let's finish by taking a look at the graph of our equation of motion, and here it is. I hope you found this helpful.